What's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video, and today I want to talk for a bit about the Orlando Magic. This is continuing my series of videos where I break down some of the most interesting teams heading into 2024, and the Magic are a squad that I'm really excited to watch. There are a lot of fun young teams that are on the come up at the moment, and the Magic are one of the most interesting out of that bunch. They've been in rebuild mode for a few years at this point, ever since they had the 2021 trade deadline fire sale, where they gave up their core pieces like Evan Fournier, Nikola Vucevic, and Aaron Gordon. It was a decision to blow it up that honestly probably should have come a few years earlier, but the important thing is that they finally did do it, and they ended up getting some decent assets, specifically from Nikola Vucevic, which ended up landing them the Chicago Bulls pick that year, which landed at number 8, in addition to the Magic themselves being bad the rest of the year, thereby landing the number 5 overall pick in the same draft. It was two great assets to utilize as the Magic began their rebuild for real this time, and they'd end up selecting Jalen Suggs, who many thought was bound to go to Toronto at 4th overall instead, sliding to the Magic there at 5, as well as Franz Wagner at 8, a do-it-all 3-4 out of Michigan, giving them two really talented and interesting young pieces to begin this new era that they're going into, including Wendell Carter, who they got in the Bulls trade, they had Markel Fultz, who they had gotten a couple years prior in a trade with the Philadelphia 76ers, Right from the get-go, they had some fun young talent over there. Of course, the following year, the Magic would end up being pretty bad, which is expected in the first year of a full rebuild, but it was well worth it as they landed the number one overall pick in a pretty seemingly stacked 2022 draft class and got the chance to select Paolo Bancaro, a dominant scoring forward out of Duke, who they eventually went with after rumors circulated that they might end up selecting Jabari Smith Jr. instead at number one, but Paolo was the pick, and so far, that's looked like a great decision. And actually, this past season, just a couple years into the rebuild, build behind the play of Paolo, Franz Wagner, Wendell Carter Jr., and the rest of that group, the Magic had a pretty good showing. They went 34-48, and 48, getting the 13th seed in the Eastern Conference. Now, that doesn't sound like a great year, but within context, it was actually incredibly promising. It was a 12-win improvement from the year prior, and most of that improvement came in the second half of the year, which I think bodes well for how they can play in this upcoming season. Over their first 41 games, the Magic went 15-26, and 26, but improved to 19-22 and 22 over that second half of the season. The primary reason for that improvement was their defense. They were clamping up in the second half of the season, having a top 10 defensive rating over that stretch. Now, unfortunately, the offense was not there to match. They were one of the worst five offenses, bottom five, in fact, over that same stretch. But defensively, they did enough to get themselves nearly to 500 over their last 41 games, which again, is great in the second year, pretty much, of your rebuild. After being taken number one overall in the draft, Paolo went on to have a phenomenal rookie season where he would nearly unanimously win rookie of the year. Statistically, he put up 20 points per game on the dot, 6.9 rebounds, and 3.7 assists to go with 42.7% shooting from the field, 29.8% from deep, and 73.8% from the line. The efficiency was rough, but that's to be expected for a number one overall option, a rookie number one overall option at that, who doesn't have a lot of great offensive talent around him on the team at the moment, which is definitely the area that the Magic are most looking to improve in this upcoming year. To me, the inefficiency doesn't matter much when it comes to Paolo. I feel pretty confident in saying that his shot is going to come along. Really, what I want to talk about is the flashes that he showed throughout the year and what he can build on, because what he showcased is going to make him one of the most special talents in the entire league someday, in my opinion. Specifically, I take a look at his movement. He does not move like he's a 6'10", 250 guy, which he is. You wouldn't expect someone of that size to have the handle that he does, to have the ability to create shots the way that he does, specifically in the mid-range when he attacks the rim, the creativity around there, finishing with both power and finesse. He's able to just shoot right over guys because he is that height, and he's got a way better handle than you would expect of someone of that height. It's really impressive. Powell has such a crazy skill set for a power forward, one that makes him incredibly unique and so much fun to watch. Even though the Magic weren't phenomenal this past year, if you didn't watch much of them or much of Paolo, go back and check out his highlights because I think everybody knows that he was special last year, but the way that he created his shots, the way that he got buckets is unlike most players in the league. It was really fun to watch, and I think as he continues to build off this, he's going to be a consistent mismatch nightmare on any given night for regardless of who he's playing. Something else really interesting about Paolo's game this past season to me was his ability to get to the line at a really high level, another skill that it takes time for young players to develop. They have to gain respect of the refs. They have to actually get that contact called and be willing to go into contact, which a lot of young players don't actually do. Paolo never really had this problem and was consistently aggressive seeking out contact and often finishing right through it. 
He finished this season with the 12th most free throw attempts per game and 534 free throw attempts total, which was 80 more than the second place rookie, Benedict Matherin. As he continues to find his offensive consistency, which again, I think he will. He just seems too talented and the shot looks too good for it to not come along at some point. Being able to get to the line and consistently put up points somehow, get himself in rhythm, is going to be very valuable. Most of the best scorers in the league get to the free throw line a lot. It's just part of the game and Paolo already getting pretty dang good at that in his rookie season is a special ability. Now, defensively, Paolo wasn't great, especially on the perimeter. But again, he's a rookie. He was a number one option trying to carry a pretty bad offense. And he did showcase some really interesting stuff, specifically on the interior. He was a big part of the team's defensive turnaround in the second half of the season. And we saw more flashes of that in FIBA play over this past summer. He was occasionally deployed as a small ball center where sometimes he got cooked, but there were a lot of times where Paolo held his own and when they put him at his natural position at the four, he was pretty good defensively. I feel confident saying that Paolo is almost assuredly going to be a pretty solid interior defender, and I think he's eventually going to get there on the perimeter as well. When you take a look at his skill set and the potential that he showcased, I think it's pretty clear that Paolo is going to be one of the league's best players on a consistent basis at some time in the not too distant future. You give him three, four, maybe even not that many years. Paolo is going to probably be a perennial all-star, consistently lifting this Magic team up. I think eventually he's going to be a threat to give you like 27 and 10 on a nightly basis, maybe even more. He's going to lock down the interior, play some pretty solid perimeter defense, and just make any matchup against him a nightmare. Meanwhile, alongside Paolo's great season, you've got Franz Wagner, who showed out as he continues to fly under the radar as one of the league's best young players. Statistically, Franz averaged 18.6 points per game, 4.1 boards, and 3.5 dimes on 58.9 true shooting percentage, which is a little above this past year's league average. Wagner can do a bit of everything. He scores in a variety of ways, especially at the rim, where he's a really high-level finisher. He can knock down threes, knock down middies. He's a really solid off-ball mover, and he also plays some pretty solid defense as well. Already in his second season, Franz has seemingly become this Swiss army knife type of forward that can really play so many different roles, which in my opinion, makes him a perfect two option next to Paolo Bencaro in that front court. Paolo certainly feels like your number one primary scorer, while Franz can, again, like I said earlier, move a lot off ball, create plays in a variety of ways. He doesn't need the ball in his hands as much. He can be extremely effective without really ever touching it beyond a couple of times here and there. But if you do need him to take over, Franz has shown the ability to do that as well. I think he's a great secondary threat next to Paolo, and the two of them feel like a great match in that front court going forward as your two stars. I don't think people would be too surprised if Paolo became an all-star this year. Me personally, I'm somewhat anticipating opinion. I mean, there were people even talking about him being an all-star this past year as a rookie, so nobody's going to be surprised if he's a second-year all-star, but I think people would be surprised if Franz became one within the next few years, but to me, that wouldn't be a shock at all. In fact, I'm expecting Franz to become a consistent all-star at some point in his career, and I think it could come a lot sooner than later if the Magic rise up the Eastern Conference standings. This duo of Franz and Paolo is obviously at the core of what the Magic are building. They are the primary building blocks, but they're certainly, not by a long shot, the only intriguing young guys on this roster. Let's talk about the guard rotation, which right now is a bit of a logjam. There are five guards, in my opinion, that probably should get some sort of playing time this season. You've got Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, Anthony Black, Markel Fultz, and Gary Harris. This is part of why this year is particularly interesting for Orlando, because this is a year where they've got to figure out who's going to be the staples of this guard rotation going forward. Who do we need to trade? Who are we going to make our primary ball handlers? How are they going to make this thing work? And that's a big reason why I'm so excited to see what Orlando does, because these guard options are all very intriguing in their own ways. Let's start off by talking about the best player in this group at the moment in Markel Fultz. This past season, he averaged 14 points per game, 3.9 rebounds, 5.7 assists, and 1.5 steals, while shooting a pretty impressive 51% from the field and 31% from deep. Markel Fultz is a really fun playmaker, great finisher, and pretty good defender. That was a big part of the Magic's defensive uptick in the latter half of this past year's season. He's really struggled to consistently stay on the court due to injuries, but when he has, he's been a big boost to the Magic. The team looks a lot more cohesive offensively when he's out there making things happen. One issue clearly is that he really struggles from the perimeter, which shrinks the floor a lot for a guy like Paolo and Franz, who both like to operate inside when possible. If he could somehow develop a three-point shot, it'd be huge, and I'm hopeful that he still can, but I'm certainly not counting on it. Next, there's Jalen Suggs, who fits somewhat of a similar mold. In his sophomore year, he put up 9.9 .9 points per game, 3 rebounds and 2.9 assists, with 1.3 steals while shooting 42% from the field and 32.7% from deep. 
Like Fultz, he's a really intriguing perimeter defender with an unfortunate ability to shoot. Now, I will note towards the end of the season, Suggs did seem to kind of figure things out a little bit. Over his last 30 games, he put up 10.2 points per game while shooting 38.2% from three. If he can make that happen, Suggs could be a long-term solution in this backcourt, especially with that defense, which seems like it can be phenomenal at some point. Now, unfortunately, I don't know if the shot is going to come along, and if it doesn't, I could see Suggs being one of the odd men out in this backcourt just because it's so crowded so far. Suggs just doesn't have the playmaking or rim finishing ability of a guy like Markel Fultz, and I think his ceiling is a bit lower than a guy like Anthony Black, who the Magic just drafted with the sixth overall pick, and I expect to make an impact from day one. Black came into the draft as one of the better perimeter defenders in the class. He's a really solid playmaker, showed some great court vision at college. He can't shoot, which again is somewhat of a theme in this backcourt, but but really interesting in particular is his 6-7 frame. He can play a number of positions, the one, the two, he could probably even slot up to the three if need be, and they could run some three guard lineups with him making it work if the defense is as good as it seems like it's going to be. I also feel pretty confident in saying at some point, Anthony Black's shot is probably going to come around. We've seen a lot of clips of him working on it before his rookie season has even started. He cited that as an area that he needs to work on, and he shot pretty well in the mid range this past season, and just having that 6-7 frame is going to allow him to at least get the shot off over a number of defenders. I really like his game and in my opinion pretty soon he's going to be a consistent staple of that starting backcourt. Rounding out the young guards on this team we've got Cole Anthony who is easily the most scoring focused guy out of the bunch. He put up 13 points per game this past season while shooting 36.4% from deep. To me, it feels like he can probably be a pretty good six man for this squad. I don't see him as a long-term starter, but he's a great spark plug to have. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up getting traded because, again, they've got such a log jam here, and I think he could fit on a number of teams as that spark plug guard off the bench like he's doing for the Magic right now. Last guy to talk about here is Gary Harris, who's much older than the other guards in this group at 28, but plays a pretty valuable role of defending and knocking down threes at a ridiculous clip. I don't think enough people realize Gary Harris shot 43.1% from deep this past season, which is ridiculous, especially for a team that really lacks shooting. Harris provides them exactly that at an elite level. There's a reason they've kept him on this roster, and I feel like he's going to be here to stay, even if eventually he moves to a consistent bench role. So that's five guys who are all intriguing in their own ways and gives the Magic a lot of different options to go with in different scenarios. This season, like I said, is going to be pretty important for them picking out their backcourt of the future. It's certainly not the only year to evaluate. They've got plenty of time to do that, and it's helpful that they have so many intriguing options across the board with just ridiculous potential all over the place. And we're not even done yet because the Magic still have a number of other guys who I think are going to be good for this team this season. Wendell Carter, in my opinion, is one of the more underrated big men in the league. He put up 15 and 9 this past year while scoring efficiently and holding his own down low defensively. He's not a very flashy player. I don't know if he's ever going to get the true recognition that he deserves, but he's super integral to how this team operates. He kind of reminds me of a young Al Horford, a big that can knock down the three ball, does a little bit of everything, defends, isn't the biggest guy out there, but consistently can hold his own. I like his game a lot, and I think someday he could land an all star nod. They also picked up Jet Howard in the lottery this past year using the second pick that they got in the Vucevic trade from Chicago. And Howard gives them an immediate help in terms of shooting and just overall offense, which again is something that they really need overall as a team. They added Joe Ingles as a veteran presence, also giving them some shooting. Caleb Houston had some interesting moments last year. They picked up Trevel and Queen, who was a G League MVP and hasn't gotten a chance yet. I don't know if he'll play that much, but at least it's an interesting piece to add to the team. They've still got Jonathan Isaac, who used to feel like a future depoy lock, hasn't been able to stay on the court. He looked decent in the 11 games that he played at the end of the season, but he did suffer another season ending surgery. And at this point, I just don't really ever expect him to consistently play. You combine this wide ranging group of young talent with some pretty good coaching from Jamal Mosley, who's been really impressive in his tenure. It's not easy to get a young team, a rebuilding squad to buy into defense, but he's been able to do that in just their second season. I've really liked what I've seen from him. So you put those two things together and you've got one of the more intriguing young teams in the league, one that's just oozing potential. And to me, feels like it's something special in the making. So yeah, that's my breakdown of this Magic roster. Really excited to see what they bring to the table in the East this year, which is an extremely weird conference. It's actually decently set up for the Magic to take a big jump. Now, now, I don't think they're going to end up getting a six seed like, again, some people are predicting, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if they're one of the Eastern Conference's top playing teams like a seven or an eight. I think more realistically, probably like a nine or a 10, just because even though it's a bit shaky, there still are some good teams out there in the Eastern Conference. We'll see if maybe some of those squads make trades like 
are the Hawks going to add another star? Are the Raptors going to blow it up by the deadline? We'll have to see, even though the season is right around the corner. Still a lot of things could change, but at least even if they don't make the playoffs this year or are just a fringe play-in team, I still think the Magic have a really, really bright future ahead of them. And this year is just a stepping stone to eventually the greatness that they're going to display within the next few years. With all that being said, I appreciate you watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Comment down below how many games you think the Magic are going to win this year. Do you think Paolo will be an all-star? Can Franz be one at some point soon? What do you think about their backcourt rotation? Who should stay? Who should go? And yeah, if there's any other teams you want to see me break down before the season begins, comment them down below as well. I'm trying to knock out a bunch of squads before the year begins in less than a month at this point, which is amazing. So sick of this offseason. I just want hoops back at this point. Uh, but yeah, appreciate y'all watching as always. I'll see y'all later. Real one, say it back.